What's the key to a healthier liver, heart, and better blood glucose management? Maintain your muscle mass. They're all related. Listen to this clip from a seminar featuring Dr. Robert Wolf, world-renowned expert on nutrition and muscle metabolism, as well as a leading authority on amino acids. What do essential amino acids do for your body besides the basics, strength, balance, mobility? You talked a little bit about it, but let's go into some of these specific areas. Uh, you talk about blood lipid levels. The, um, there's a process in the body where the liver is the central organ for producing fat. And the way the body normally works is that fat is packaged up and uh, surrounded by protein and, and released into the blood. And this is known as VLDL. And so when you see your blood tests and you see VLDL, that's, that's what you're looking at is the fat that's been in the liver that's come out into the blood. Well, the VLDL will go up or down depending on how much comes out of the liver and how well the fat can clear it. And, and essential amino acids are crucial in both aspects of that because the proteins involved in getting the, the fat out of the liver and taking it up in the peripheral fat where it belongs are both proteins that do that. So that the essential amino acid therapy will actually decrease VLDL, will decrease LDL, and increase HDL. And those are all related to the specific proteins that are involved in regulating those blood lipids. So, so obviously, that, uh, not just the blood lipid levels, the liver itself is healthier. Absolutely. We, we showed in a study of uh, otherwise pretty healthy elderly people, but they did have insulin resistance. They had an elevated liver fat. And, and, and when you're over 65, the, the predominant drug for liver fat is called phenylfibrate and has all kinds of side effects. And most geriatricians will not, uh, d uh, not prescribe it. The, in the essential amino acids actually reduced liver fat by 50%. In fact, a greater reduction than the cohort that had the phenylfibrate treatment. So that we know that liver health and blood lipids can be directly impacted by EAAs. Okay, so let's talk about one of the most important muscles in our body, right? Our heart. How do EAs impact our heart or our cardiovascular health? Well, two ways. Well, really in, in multiple ways. But first of all, recognize that the heart's a muscle. So just as the uh, essential amino acids are important in breaking down, of replacing the broken down, not so well-functioning uh, muscle proteins in the skeletal muscle, it's true in the heart as well. So as we get this process a protein turnover increase in the heart, you increase the, the ability of the heart can contract. This can be a direct benefit in heart failure and other circumstances, particularly as you get older, where the heart is just not contracting the way it should. Um, if we uh, uh, consider another aspect of amino acid therapy is uh, the, the pressure against which the heart has to pump blood out, or the blood pressure. And the principal regulator of blood pressure is nitric oxide. And that becomes deficient, particularly as you get older. And so substitution, uh, su uh, supplementation with arginine in particular is the precursor for the production of nitric oxide. And this can have a direct effect on lowering blood pressure and improving the regulation of blood flow so that the amount of blood going to different tissues in the body is in sync with the requirement for those different tissues. So that there are multiple ways that, uh, that the heart can uh, be benefited from um, EAAs. And uh, this is reflected by just the overview that large epidemiological studies with even as many as 60,000 people have shown that there's a direct relation between the uh, heart muscle strength and uh, function and the heart function and heart disease and events from cardiovascular disease. And this is all mediated through the fact that, that those healthy muscles provide an, an, a, an amount of essential amino acids that maintain these processes. And for active people or athletes, this nitric oxide production is good for endurance? Yeah, the nitric oxide is released when you start e exercising in the muscle tissue, and it makes the blood vessels expand so that you get a targeted delivery of, uh, of uh, blood, which uh, brings the oxygen and substrates necessary to produce the energy to do the exercise. So this is why nitric oxide has become a popular nutritional supplement, but it's really rather limited to take nitric oxide because it has a very fast turnover. So you take it 
and it'll have a boost for a few minutes, but then it's going to be gone. Whereas with uh, increasing the arginine level, it goes up for a few hours, so you have a sustained effect over a much longer period of time. Metabolism. Impacts on metabolism. Well, I think, you know, we heard a little bit about diabetes and saw the picture of the sugar. Um, I think probably almost everyone in this room has been told that uh, they need to be concerned about their blood sugar. If not, uh, that if it's okay now, that it's likely to be heading in the wrong direction sometime in the future because uh, almost 70% of people over the age of 65 have elevated blood glucose levels. And uh, the, the blood glucose level really is the sort of clinical, clinical uh, uh, yardstick of diabetes and the metabolic syndrome which leads to diabetes. So we really need to be concerned with the, the blood glucose level. The muscle is important is in two ways of regulating the blood glucose level. The muscle is the major site of uptake of glucose from the blood. So uh, a paper I wrote several years ago called The Underappreciated Role of Muscle in Health and Disease pointed out that diabetes is a disease of muscle function and that the entire basis for your blood level going up is the muscles are no longer as effective in clearing glucose from the blood. So that, uh, so that as you improve your muscle function, you absolutely increase the ability to take up glucose from the blood and maintain that normal glucose level. And it also prevents your blood glucose from falling between meals because as it releases the amino acids, those amino acids can be converted to glucose in the liver. So both going up and going down, uh, the muscle plays a key role in regulating uh, the uh, glucose. And, and in fact, what, what the best treatment for diabetes is exercise because exercise strengthens your muscle and increases the ability to uh, clear glucose. So uh, really, uh, the diabetes would be number one on the list that you should keep in mind of your health benefits of maintaining proper uh, muscle function and strength. If you found this video helpful, like, share, and subscribe. For Dr. Wolf's full presentation, see the link below. To live stronger at any age, visit myohealth.com and take the 30-day MyoHealth Challenge.